This video only covers the cowboy's normal attacks. So I'll be using plenty of terminology that I won't be explaining here, but there are brief explanations and links in the description if you need them. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Horizontal slash ground version, commonly referred to as H slash. The beginning of this attack has the cowboy taking a big step forward. Then there are two contiguous sets of active frames. The first set is the blade and the second is the shockwave that comes off of it. The sword hitbox is active frame 6 and 7. The shockwave is on frames 8 and 9, effectively making this attack active for 4 frames in a row. This attack is interruptible as soon as frame 16 and has the option to draw cancel. Hitting will deal 1000 base damage but comes with proration 1, lowering any combo damage you deal by 1 step. Both you and your opponent will be in 4 frames of hit stop. Hitting with the sword hitbox causes 10 frames of hit stop but the shockwave will apply 13 instead. You can teleport in warp stance with a hit cancel but not any other normal movement, nor can you repeat this attack or dodge. Normally the knockback against the grounded opponent will just push them away horizontally, but against an aerial opponent they will be sent diagonally upwards. H slash combines a long reach with solid speed that presents a huge threat. It can hit your opponents from your starting positions with the speed to outpace the vast majority of actions and the reach to outrange faster attacks. It even has decent base damage. However this move has a poor relationship with combos as it's held back by paration, mediocre hit stun, your opponent can easily DI out of the range of some of your follow-ups. Still, H slash is very powerful and neutral and the cowboy has the tools to compensate for its shortcomings. But what about the diagonal version? The qualities of this remain largely the same, but here are the few exceptions. The shockwave hitbox does not apply extra hit stun, the diagonal variant can hit cancel into horizontal slash, diagonal or otherwise, and hitting grounded opponents will send them airborne instead of keeping them grounded. Since opponents are always made airborne, the hit stun is effectively 11. Also, the diagonal version does not share hit decay with the normal version. Normal H slash can fail to hit opponents, suddenly becoming airborne, depending on the angle, but the diagonal version will cover that vertical space. While the cowboy has stronger anti-air attacks that cover more space, diagonal H slash is the fastest and least committal. However, this anti-air usage comes at the cost of the long horizontal threat that the normal version poses. Horizontal slash air version. When the sword is swung, it will push you upwards slightly. It will also give you forward momentum that can be used to reverse your direction in the air without using an air option. Similar to its grounded version, the hitbox is active starting frame 6 and remains until frame 9. It is interruptible as soon as frame 19 and is draw cancelable. When it hits, it deals 900 base damage, causes both players 4 frames of hit stop, and applies 17 frames of hit stun to the opponent. You cannot repeat this attack on a hit cancel, nor can you dash. The knockback is almost entirely horizontal but does push upwards slightly. Air H slash has decent speed, reach, and damage and has some situational utilities built in as well. Its mostly horizontal knockback is great for changing your combo's direction to either bring your opponent towards the wall or away from their hazards. When bringing an aerial combo to the ground, this move can potentially be used to restand the opponent and even utilize a bland to smoothly transition into grounded attacks without slowing down to land. This attack can also use an exploit to perform a bleep, but it's not practical. Vertical slash, ground version, commonly referred to as V slash. Starting with the big step forward into a large slashing hitbox, the startup frame count will change if you have initiative, lowering it by two frames. With initiative, the hitbox is active frames 9 and 10, without it, 11 and 12. This will also adjust how soon you can act after using it. 17 frames with initiative, 19 frames without it. V slash can also use a draw cancel. Landing this attack deals 1150 base damage, causes 4 frames of hit stop, and applies 40 frames of hit stun. But this normally gets bumped up to 41. Hit canceling this allows you to repeat the attack, but you won't be able to dodge, walk, or super dash. When hitting a grounded opponent, it will bounce them off the ground and send them airborne diagonally, flying more vertical than horizontal. Hitting an aerial opponent will send them straight to the floor and restand them, which will interrupt their hit stun when they land. V slash is your most reliable source of hit stun on the ground, and hitting it provides ample time to prepare your follow up. You can thousand cuts into teleport, tempore around into impale, or even the classic teleport into three combo down. V slash has great damage combined with reach that can potentially punish jump ins at certain angles. It is lacking in speed, however, and its forward moving startup can inadvertently place you in range of faster attacks, but this lack of speed can be used to punish niche defensive options like spot dodge and back sway. While it may not always be the right choice during neutral, it is a powerful combo tool that should be used as early as possible. Vertical Slash, Air Version. Unlike other moves with air and ground versions, Aerial V Slash has little in common with its ground version. Its hitbox is active frames 5 and 6, it's interruptible on frame 18, and is draw cancelable. Due to its speed, draw cancelling this move can actually pull out your gun faster than quick draw in very specific scenarios. On top of that, sometimes draw cancelling and choosing to holster can be as fast or faster than recovering normally. Hitting this attack will deal 700 damage, cause 4 frames of hit stop for yourself, but 6 for the opponent, and will apply 14 frames of hit stun. With the extra hit stop, it's effectively 16 frames of hit stun, or 17 to an aerial opponent. The hit cancel doesn't allow for repeating the move or dashing. The knockback is quite weak but does push the opponent away horizontally and slightly downwards. 
Hitting a grounded opponent will keep them grounded, while hitting an aerial opponent can potentially re-stand them. Aerial V-Slash's main draw is speed, as it's one of the cowboy's quickest attacks, but at the sacrifice of reach, making it more like an aerial version of Pummel than Vertical Slash. It outspeeds horizontal slashes while being slower than Pummel and Grab. While many of the cowboy's attacks will apply movement or changes to momentum, Aerial V-Slash will simply maintain the cowboy's current momentum while performing the attack, which may or may not be to your advantage. If your opponent is too close to you during an air combo, V-Slash can hit when other attacks would move you out of position. Grab can be a better option in those scenarios, but if you're close to the ground, V-Slash is normally better, especially if you need a re-stand. Upward Swipe, Ground Version. The startup for this attack will slide you forward slightly, and once the active frames start, you will have substantial vertical lift that takes you up higher than normal jumping can. Swipe is active during frames 8 to 11, interruptible frame 23, and is draw cancelable. While it doesn't have the impressive draw speed like Vertical Slash, it is possible for Upward Swipe to draw cancel and holster faster than its normal recovery. Hitting your opponent deals 700 damage, causes you 7 frames of hit stop but 9 for your opponent, and applies 29 frames of hit stun. Normally the effect of hit stun will be 32. Your hit cancel will allow you to follow up with the aerial Upward Swipe, but not Dash. The knockback sends your opponent upwards and slightly towards you, and the DI nudges higher than normal at 1.2. Since this move has so much upward momentum in the same direction as the knockback, combined with higher nudge, the opponent can use DI to end up on any side of you, left, right, above, or below. Upward swipe can be considered an anti-air attack, but it directly competes with horizontal slash's diagonal version, which hits and recovers sooner. Swipe does have some advantages though, as it lacks paration and applies much more hit stun, allowing you to start 1000 cuts into teleport, teleport into lasso, temporal round into lasso, or just buy you time to reposition. Having slower active frames can prove advantageous if your opponent is slow to enter your range. Swipe covers more space and can prove better at dealing with opponents approaching from above, but is outclassed in that regard by Backslash. Upward Swipe's long recovery makes it a liability, but it does have a niche use. The strong upward momentum makes this move difficult to punish when parried, as it can place you too far away to hit, and in some situations cannot be punished at all. This can be used as a powerful Oki tool after causing a hard knockdown, though its timing is very specific. Upward swipe, air version, largely the same as the ground version, but here are the differences. The knockback is marginally weaker and so is its vertical lift. It also can't draw cancel. The grounded version can use the aerial version afterwards using a hit cancel or not, but the aerial version cannot be repeated back to back. Neither versions of the move consume air options, but the aerial version will only move you upwards once before touching the ground again, though repeated uses will slow your fall slightly. While the ground version is overshadowed by better anti-air options, the aerial version is one of the only options for hitting someone above you, and the competition is not strong. Even so, this attack won't help against someone directly overhead. Stinger. Game did refers to it as Poke. This move starts with a small dash forward and becomes active frames 11 and 12, making it slow enough to punish attempts to parry. It's interruptible on frame 21 and can draw cancel. Landing a Stinger will deal 1200 damage and give negative 1 paration, delaying the start of combo scaling by 1 hit. The hit stop will last 7 frames for both parties and keeps the opponent in hit stun until they're hit again or collide with a surface. Hit cancelling will not allow a repeat, dodge, spot dodge, or any movement besides instant teleport. The attack has strong horizontal knockback that lifts the victim up slightly off the ground and causes knockdowns of wall splats. Stinger is a powerful combo starter as it deals high damage, applies negative paration, and plenty of hit stun. With good positioning and timing, it's great during the combo as well, especially if you can apply wall splats. While its knockback can send your opponent out of the range of follow-ups, starting a combo with it will give you enough meter to instant teleport and enough time to continue the combo regardless of DI. Stinger has a strong reach that barely outranges horizontal slash while not quite reaching as far as lightning slice. If you think your opponent will attempt to parry, Stinger is a great option to punish blocking opponents and can also hit other defensive options. Of course, its slow startup does make it vulnerable to faster attacks and the forward movement can place you in their range. While Stinger has good horizontal reach, its hitbox is quite narrow, so opponents in the air may just slip past it. It does have some other uses though, like combining its horizontal movement with cancels. You can use a free cancel Stinger to create a sort of makeshift quick dash towards or away from your opponent. You can also try a flipped draw cancel Stinger to open up a gap before using your gun. Downward Cleave, Air Version. The startup begins with a small forward moving hop, but once the hitbox becomes active frame 9, you will begin to fastball while maintaining the hitbox. The active frames will continue until you land, and you'll be actionable 4 frames afterwards. Hitting this attack will deal 700 damage, cause you 4 frames of hit stop, but 8 for the opponent, and applies 11 frames of hit stun. The effect of hit stun will be 15 on the ground and 16 in the air. Hit cancelling will not allow you to repeat this attack, dodge, or use movement besides teleporting. The knockback sends aerial opponents downwards and slightly away from you and will cause a knockdown if they reach the ground during hit stun. Hitting a grounded opponent will just push them away horizontally. Downward cleave is usually just a tool for aerial combos for either bringing your opponent to the ground or hitting someone below you. Since it also brings yourself closer to the ground, it can help to transition into a grounded combo to reset your air options. Not to mention that this attack can bland. The long duration of active frames can be utilized for catching opponents both in and out of combos. However, be careful of burst as it can cause downward cleave to miss even if the burst doesn't hit you. 
punish you. You may fall right past them and drop the combo and you won't be actionable until reaching the ground. Although in some situations the prolonged hitbox will just catch them after the burst ends. While this attack is a slow startup, its recovery is safer than most. Once the active frames end, you'll be actionable 4 frames later. Depending on your opponent's options, approaching to attack during that window may prove difficult with the hitbox covering for you. For this reason, using this attack with perfect positioning and timing for Oki can make it unpunishable even when parried. Downward Cleave, ground version. Superficially the same as the air version, but there are some very important differences. For starters, the active frames don't start until frame 11. It applies one less hit stop frame to the victim and applies eight frames of hit stun instead of 11. Your effective hit stun becomes 11 as a result. Your only options for hit canceling are supers, instant cancel, and burst cancel. Even if you bland, you'll only gain the hustle option, so comboing off this attack will always require you spend a resource. The uses for this attack are very niche. Its slow startup means that it can punish block and other defensive options. While Stinger can do the same, there are situations where you'd want to forego the forward momentum or even just leave the ground. Becoming airborne can also let you jump over some low hitting attacks, although it won't be reliable in every situation. I don't recommend using this attack unless you know exactly what you're doing. Ankle Cutter. The hitbox is active frame 7 and 8, which is when the attack pushes you forward slightly. Ankle Cutter is interruptible frame 18 and is draw cancelable. Hitting deals 700 damage, causes 6 frames of hit stop, and applies 14 frames of hit stun. This attack will always cause the opponent to become airborne, so the hit stun is effectively 15. Hit cancelling does not allow dodge, walk, super dash, or any normal attack, so you'll normally follow up with a special attack. The knockback is unusual as it brings your opponent upwards and towards you, and while you'll rarely see it, this attack causes a knockdown. But the most important thing about Ankle Cutter is that it is the only cowboy attack that hits low. Generally, Ankle Cutter is for performing high-low mix-ups. This can mean using Ankle Cutter when you think the opponent will block high. But more often, when your opponent is actionable, you should free cancel a higher hitting move, then swap to Ankle Cutter. Or free cancel Ankle Cutter and potentially switch to a high hitting move. Due to its mediocre damage, hit stun, and hit cancel limitations, it's not especially useful during combos. But there is a time and place to utilize its knockback direction to cause a DI mix-up against your opponent. Additionally, hitting your opponent towards you can be handy if the wall is behind you. Compared to H-Slash, Ankle Cutter is slower, shorter, weaker, and has a narrow hitbox. While H-Slash manages to miss some airborne opponents, Ankle Cutter struggles even more. Less experienced players may mistake this attack as one that hits OTG, but the Cowboy has no such attacks. Pummel. This is the Cowboy's equivalent to a jab. During this attack, the Cowboy slides forward very slightly, the hitbox is active frames 4 and 5, and is interruptible frame 14. Pummel deals 400 damage and applies Paration 2 if used as the first hit, pushing your combo scaling 2 hits ahead. This attack also causes 4 frames of hit stop and 12 frames of hit stun. Hit cancelling allows you to repeat the attack but not dodge, walk, or super dash. The horizontal knockback is somewhat small and pushes the opponent away, and hitting an aerial opponent will send them downwards, causing a restand. Pummel's primary use is to act as your fastest non-grab attack at close range, however it loses out in the Cowboy's tendency for long reach. The low damage and paration make this move a poor combo starter, but if you're in pummel range, it may prove unwise to use something stronger. If you're greedy and think you can outspart your opponent, you can find a way to start with a better attack, but a weak combo is better than no combo. Pummel isn't too useful during combos either, its poor damage and mediocre hit stun leave much to be desired, but its speed and ability to restand can occasionally save a combo from ending. The Cowboy benefits from long reach and powerful combo tools, so you should be able to avoid relying on pummel if you're playing as smart. Grab. This attack is active frames 3 to 5 and is interruptible frame 15. The next frame after landing a grab, you will be prompted to throw the opponent left or right as well as downwards if you're in the air. As soon as your opponent is grabbed, they will become invulnerable to everything else until thrown. You will also become invulnerable but not until the second frame of the throw animation, and it ends once you become actionable again. This brief opening means it's possible to have a successful grab be interrupted by outside threats. Upon selecting a throw direction, it will take 10 frames before the victim is actually thrown and 15 frames until you become actionable. The throw would deal 1,000 1,500 damage outside of a combo and 900 during one. It applies 30 frames of hit stun, but due to your delayed action ability, it's effectively 24. If the victim reaches the ground during hit stun, they will be knocked down. The knockback is entirely horizontal and is slightly stronger on the ground than in the air. The downward air throw, however, does have the downward knockback. It is important to note that grabbing in the air cannot affect grounded opponents, and grounded grabs cannot affect aerial opponents. This means that grabs can be countered by changing your grounded state to an aerial one, or vice versa. Grabbing at the same time as your opponent will cause a neutral reset. Beware that grabbing an opponent on the ground allows them to DI downward and become knocked down without giving you the opportunity to intervene. The cowboy does not have access to OTG moves to threaten a downed opponent with, and while he does have powerful Oki tools, these aren't reliable unless the opponent has suffered a hard knockdown. While grab is faster than pummel, it has a shorter reach and is worse for combos while on the ground. 
While it does compensate a little with its high damage, even with Pommel's lower damage and proration, a bad combo will easily outperform the throw. However, the main issues are largely alleviated if performed far from the ground, as the throw will provide enough hit stun to continue the combo or even reposition first. If you can get close enough mid-air to grab, it can outperform Aerial V-Slash with its superior speed, damage, and hit stun. Not to mention that it can change direction and redirect your combo. And that's all the Cowboys' normal attacks. If you Yomi learned something, then block punish the subscribe button. Or uh, just click on it like a normal person, I guess. Or don't, like whatever fills your super meter, hustler.